Hey, Psych2Goers, we hope you're doing well and finding time to take care of yourself. Let's begin. Depression is a serious condition that many people choose to handle on their own. Some people bottle up their emotions for years and try to remedy themselves because they fear being stigmatized or rejected. Although those with depression sometimes exhibit certain behavior patterns, depression looks and feels different for everyone. With that, here are five things people with depression secretly do alone. As a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is not intended nor implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. All content contained in this video is for general information purposes only and does not replace a consultation with your own doctor or mental health professional. Let's begin. Number one, they spend their energy fighting off other symptoms of depression. Depression is much more than a psychological condition. Physical symptoms such as fatigue are common symptoms. Battling depression is extremely exhausting and leaves little motivation for anything else. Most of their energy is to fight off other symptoms or to conceal their depression, leaving other aspects of their life neglected. If you notice this in yourself or someone you know, try to find time to take breaks and focus on self-care or encourage others to do the same. Taking the proper amount of time to recharge and focus on your emotions is important to maintain balance. Number two, they spend time distracting themselves. How much time do you spend on social media? Social media is a powerful tool for connection and creative expression, but often than not, it's a tool for escape. People with depression sometimes resort to social media as a source of distraction. However, it can exacerbate your symptoms. A 2019 study published in The Lancet found that nighttime social media activity disrupts sleep, which negatively affects your mood, making you feel more unhappy. Another study conducted and published in 2018 by the University of Pennsylvania found that lesser time on social media leads to happier moods. Hence, if you notice that you or someone you know prefers to spend time distracting themselves online, find an alternative activity to substitute social media usage. Picking up a hobby or spending more time outdoors can be helpful. Number three, they're comforted by reruns. Do you have any movies or TV series that you wouldn't mind watching again? For people who experience depression, Watching reruns of old shows provides comfort and nostalgia. They offer a sense of predictability and safety. Watching reruns makes you feel calm and at ease, and there's nothing wrong with that. People who experience depression may exhibit many different symptoms. Regardless of someone's behavior, you should always extend kindness and compassion towards those with mental health issues and towards yourself. Number four, they might engage in habitual remedies. To alleviate emotional turmoil, someone with depression may resort to coping mechanisms. Remedies like listening to music, painting, going for bike rides or walks are all generally healthy if they help you cope. However, some of these strategies are unhealthy. Maladaptive daydreams and romanticizing the past are examples of unhealthy coping mechanisms as they distract you from your life and often make you value your daydreams over reality. They can cause a behavioral addiction that leads to complete absorption in fantasy, social withdrawal, and neglect of everyday life. Some ways to deal with maladaptive daydreams are to reduce fatigue and avoid external triggers. However, the best way is to reach out to a therapist for help. And number five, sometimes they may send a cry for help. It can be insanely difficult to reach out for help. Although most of us tend to keep our emotions at bay, it's always beneficial to reach out to someone. Unfortunately, not many of us do, even though we may want to. Most times people who experience depression may wanna let others know how they're feeling, but fear of becoming burdens. Hence, they may make a passing remark disguised as a joke or type out a long text, but erase it before sending it. These muted cries for help may not always be noticeable, but if you have a hunch that someone is trying to reach out, let them know that you're always available to talk. Do you relate to any of these points? Or do you know someone who is struggling with depression? Tell us in the comments. The truth is that our society is not particularly welcoming towards those who walk around with scars. We're discouraged from being open about our wounds and fears. It's this idea that causes those to try and deal with their conditions in secrecy. If you ever need assistance or guidance, please reach out to a licensed therapist. Be sure to like the video and share it with anyone you feel might benefit from it. And make sure to subscribe to Psych2Go and turn on the notifications to keep up with our uploads. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video. Take care.